Hello and welcome to our containment facility at the Biotechnology Research Institute, University Malaysia, Sabah. This is a containment facility which is controlled in terms of the temperature as well as lighting. And today I'm going to introduce you to my experiment which is basically a preliminary experiment to determine the effect of aeration on the growth of plants using the Kretke method. As you must be aware, the Kretke method is a famous method which is used in hydroponics, which was developed by Professor Kretke. And you will find a lot of references to this method in the YouTube videos as well as in scientific literature. Now, the basic principle of Kretke relies on the usage of a nutrient solution. And this nutrient solution will be basically maintained in the chamber below and you will have a plant which is suspended over this and the plant will basically send out roots into the nutrient solution and will then grow and flower. That's the idea behind the Kretke method. So it utilizes very little energy as there is no usage of the motorized pumps as used in conventional hydroponics. Now what we have done in this experiment is extended the Kretke method, as many other reviewers have suggested, the usage of aeration will improve yields. Now what we have done is the experimental setup, which is using 12 gallon buckets. We are on 12 gallons, so we have around 11 gallons of nutrient solution. Now this nutrient solution has been designed and developed by us at the lab. And it basically uses two sets of nutrients. The first set of nutrients during the vegetative growth phase and the second set of nutrients during the flowering phase. Now we have two plants set up here and this one over here I'm pointing it out is basically aerated. I have set up an aeration system which utilizes an aerator and I'm going to lift up this and this is the advantage of the Kretke method in terms of the science. You can always lift up and evaluate the growth of the roots. Now the roots are growing very well, not very profuse, but they are growing well and the aerator is working in this bucket to provide aeration. There's a very gentle aeration. Now, as a precaution, I'm not going to utilize too much air as excessive aeration can lead to flocculation. Now, this plant is basically well grown. It's around six weeks old and you can see that it has flowered. There are flowers here. And I'm not sure about pollination. I'll have to do, develop a method to pollinate uh, this plant artificially as the system over here does not permit any form of insects to enter into this particular facility. Now let's take a look at the other plant which is non aerated and I am going to lift it up and you can see the root growth is very profuse as in most Kretke systems there will be two sets of roots. The upper set of roots basically are air roots and then the lower set of roots are basically roots which absorb nutrients. I am going to lift this up so you get a better view. And as compared to the other setup with aeration, this non-aerated setup showing a lot of profuse root growth. Okay, let's look at the economics of this in terms of the energy usage as well as the biomass. Now this plant has basically no flowers, it's non-aerated and the leaves have a shape which is curled. There's more curling in this leaf as compared to the other roots. I have basically set this up. And whereas with most chilies, you have to trim the nodes so that you get only a single plant growing from a single tree. So you have a single uh, node and you trim it and you only allow a single stem to proliferate. Let's look at the economics of this. For instance, if you, in terms of farming, farmers would prefer higher biomass on the top as compared to the roots. And this will translate into more yields in terms of the fruits. Whereas non-aeration results in more biomass in terms of the roots as the plant basically tries to adapt to an environment with lower oxygen levels. So a significant amount of energy is spent on the roots itself and a significant amount of energy is reduced in terms of the uh, growth potential in fruiting. Now this experiment is in the preliminary stages. I will keep you updated on this channel as we progress because we are going to do what is known as a quantitative assessment. We are going to measure 
the yield in terms of the fruiting from both the plants and we are also going to weigh the biomass in terms of the root and the shoot and as in most methods the ideal mix would be a balance between aeration as well as the nutrient usage because too much aeration will result in the increase in the amount of energy put into the system and that's not what a farmer would like as it's not economical and this basically is an overview of our experiment we are going to set up replicates and publish this results in a scientific paper and what's interesting to note is that this is the same plant the same cultivar the same seeds from the same packet the same batch and you can see variations in the growth and this is supposed to be a determinate hybrid from a reputed supplier however the, there's a difference or variation in the growth of the plants now what's very interesting is this anomaly okay this is a plant which is basically in the soil same nutrients and we are using kakila which is a substrate but you can see the growth as compared to the other plants is significantly lower now let's look at this plant which is a very interesting anomaly this is a plant in the same nutrient and it has no aeration and as you can see it has flowered it's well flowering very well i'll have to investigate as to why this is happening in this circumstances all other conditions are same this is a climate controlled greenhouse we have a uh, halogen lighting we have lighting at the top which would provide lighting in event that the external environment has a reduction in the total ambient sunlight today is a cloudy day so the lights have come on to compensate for the lighting and the temperature here is stable at around 24 degrees centigrade relative humidity around 60 to 70% and that results in drying out but it's good for us as it reduces the amount of pathogens so high humidity in greenhouses will also lead to higher pathogen in the system as fungus proliferates when there's humidity these are some of our other experiments which involve lemon balm so we have lemon basil here and we have other experiments so we will keep you updated as this is part of our course in plant molecular biology and we are looking also at the influence of the kratky method on gene expression in different vegetable systems okay that brings us to the end of this video i will keep you updated with the yield and hopefully we have sufficient data in order to publish in a journal thank you very much for watching and stay tuned